Welcome to Inspired Living with Mark and Kim. Every Wednesday, Mark and Kim, along with their special guests, will explore thought-provoking topics and ideas that promote creativity, self-help, healing, happiness, and well-being to inspire you on your spiritual journey. Each week, Mark and Kim will discuss different paths to achieving a more spiritual, balanced, happy, and healthy lifestyle. Topics will elevate consciousness and range from metaphysics to the human and social experience and all things spiritual. Welcome to an inspired community that offers support, encouragement, and new ways of thinking. Mark and Kim are tested, certified, and professional spiritual mediums, metaphysical teachers, healers, and spiritual advisors with their own individual spiritual practices in Seattle, Washington, and Los Angeles, California. You are the inspired and the inspiration. And good afternoon, inspired listeners. It is so good to be back with you after a two week leave. You know, it's always nice to be on vacation, but I have to say it's always nice to be back home too. And I have really missed being here. But we've got a great show ahead of us today where uh, we're going to be touching on a variety of interesting topics from the health benefits of gardening to following your passions in life and fairy energy. All right. I'm Kim Thalkin, founder of Love First, where life transformations happen in the beautiful Encino, California. You can find me at lovefirst.info. Um, I do have a couple of classes coming up, which is an angel communication class on the 14th and 15th of May. It'll be held right here in Encino, California. If you're interested in learning more, please check out um, the information on my site at lovefirst.info. And as you all know, too, Mark and I are going to be hosting a workshop on July 16th here in LA. Uh, so please make sure to check out marklanehart.com for that. And want to just bring on my lovely co-host, Mark Lanehart at this time, the intuitive prospector in Seattle, Washington. Mark, it's so nice to be back with you today. Hello, Kim. Hello, Inspired listeners. Welcome back. How was your vacation? Did you have a great time? It was wonderful. Yes, we were in uh, Florida and the Caribbean. So, you know, can't complain with that. <laughs> no, not at all. Well, we missed you. Welcome back. We've had a couple great shows, and today is going to be a very interesting and fun show. Talking with uh, Chris before we came live on the air, talking a little bit about gardening and and fairy energy and getting out in nature. Mm-hmm. So I'm really looking forward to uh, what Chris has to share with us today. Uh, like Kim said, I am uh, Mark Lane Hart, the Intuitive Prospector here in Seattle, Washington. Uh, if you would like to get out in life, if na- in nature, explore and discover more about spirituality, find your own spiritual gold, look me up at marklanehart.com or you can just do an internet search for the Intuitive Prospector. I do have my first spiritual hike of the season coming up this Saturday, April 16th. We're going to be going to a waterfall called Franklin Falls. We're going to be doing a guided meditation, a lot of fun lunch, transportation, and everything is provided. And that's going to be uh, this Saturday, April 16th. And then I have have a workshop, like you said, Kim, in July with you. I'll be coming down to uh, L.A. to do our first joint workshop, so I'm looking forward to that. And I have another workshop scheduled uh, for Sunday, June 12th in Spokane, Washington, uh, where I'll be teaching about spirituality, metaphysics called Spiritual Borders. So you can find all that information at marklanehart.com. And Kim, it's April, and every month we have our positive affirmation. And this month's positive affirmation is life is a joy filled with delightful surprises. And the last couple of weeks, we've had all sorts of delightful surprises. So I thought it was fitting that we use that as our uh, April positive affirmation. Again, life is a joy filled with delightful surprises. If you want to engage with the show and, and interact with us live right now, head on over to our Facebook page, Inspired Living Radio. You can post your questions there or on our Twitter account, and the Twitter account is Inspired For Us, and that is the number for us. And we'll try to bring as many questions live to air for our special guests, and it's a good way to interact live with both Kim and myself and our celebrity and special guests that we have on each and every Wisdom Wednesday. You can also follow us over on Instagram at Inspired For Us or Google Plus Communities, Inspired Living with Mark and Kim. And if you do miss the live show today, 
don't worry. We've got all of our Encore shows over at Ohm Times Archives. We're also found on iTunes, YouTube, Podbean, SoundCloud, or MarkLaneHeart.com. And if you are looking to get on board and become a sponsor of Inner, uh, Inspired Living Radio, please let Kim or I know as we are uh, a growing show and we are looking for sponsorship to help uh, bring uh, our positive messages and our inspired uh show to get you on a path of being inspired so come on board and join join the uh, IRL team very good yes and uh, we've got a delightful surprise for you today speaking of which <laughs> with our <laughs> with our guest today Chris Young who is a uh, he is an author a children's author he is a gardening connoisseur can't wait to hear about his garden because it's won many accolades here. So we're going to learn a little bit more about that. And he's also a self-expressed fairy expert. I love that. We've never had a fairy expert on. Uh, Chris grew up in the Midwest and that's where he discovered his love of nature and the outdoors. But he did find himself living in the concrete jungle of New York City post-graduation, where he spent a lot of his time in the entertainment industry um, as an assistant at William Morris Talent Agency. That's some serious stuff there, Chris. Can't wait to hear about that. Mm -hmm. And ultimately became the director of uh, Talent at Comedy Central, working on The Daily Show with Jon Stewart, who we all know, um, among others uh, like Stephen Colbert. But eventually, Chris moved to LA where he now resides and he's got a, a home with a beautiful garden called Tiny Sir and he followed his passion of gardening and he left the world of entertainment behind as did I Chris so yeah. uh, Chris's days are devoted now to writing and tending to his own garden where he gets most of his inspiration he just uh, came out with a book is that a fairy which you can find uh, he'll, he'll let us know where you can find this book um, that uh, uh, inspires young readers and they can enjoy the real sounds from Tiny Sir and hear the real barks from Chris's beloved beagle Daisy, I love it, who inspired the lovable canine companion of the main character in his book. So he's going to tell us all about his book too. Uh, he currently resides in Laurel Canyon, California, which is not far from Encino. And he uh, lives in his home with his husband, John, Daisy the beagle, three cats, a tortoise, a pond full of fish and over 30,000 honeybees. Chris, welcome to the show. Welcome, you Chris. My bunny. How could you leave out my bunny? Hi, you guys. Oh, did you have a bunny? I didn't see that. I'm sorry. Yeah, she showed up in the arms of a friend. He found her under his car, and she's a little, one of those little Belgian black and white bunnies. And he said, Oh, Chris will know what to do. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It looks like the bunny found the perfect home. <laughs> <laughs> Hope, yeah, I think. Wow. But so hey, is it weird? Is it? Thank you, you guys, for the intro. And is it weird that I want to take every one of your classes? Oh, no. no I, not you know, at all. I have to say, Chris, honestly, as I was talking about the angel class, I thought, I wonder if Chris would be interested in this. And it's right down the street from you. <laughs> yes, he would. Yes, he would. <laughs> good. Well, we'll talk afterwards. <laughs> okay, good. So, Chris, you have a very interesting background, and it's so funny because I share in a similar background. I also worked for the Viacom family. I was in affiliate oh. sales at Showtime Networks. We both worked for Viacom then. Cause, yes, yeah. in our cable days, and now look at us. We've followed our passion, right? We've and escaped. We escaped. <laughs> yeah, we escaped. <laughs> well, yes. Especially when I read you were an assistant at William Morris. That must have been something else. Well, did you ever see, have you ever seen the uh, Kevin Spacey movie, uh, Swimming with Sharks? I did not, but I heard about it. Well, if, if you ever come across that, it was very much like that. It was, it was pretty rough. It was pretty rough. I can only imagine. And um, it, it must be quite the contrast going from that to gardening. Oh yeah, <laughs> kind yeah. of beautiful one at that. I bet they have no. They, I bet it's like they can't even understand, right? Yeah, that you left that not, world to garden and do what you love. <laughs> yeah, there's not a lot of overlap, is there? 
<laughs> no, no. But I tell you, it serves it per- its purpose while you're in that world. And it, yeah. you know, hey, I had a great experience while I was doing it. But I'll tell you, I've never been happier doing what I love. Yeah. And you know what? No, I have no regrets about anything. Well, anything, but um, other than like, you know, falling down the stairs last year or whatever, but, oh, <laughs> but I have goodness. no regrets about the past work wise. I, you know, I think that every single thing you do um, leads you to something else, even if it's totally as unlikely as what we're doing. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. You know, and I just want to touch on um, John Stewart. I understand he's doing some fabulous work with sanctuaries for animals. Yeah, he, yeah, it turns out the thing with John, and this is, I'm not really giving you an inside scoop, but he really is an awesome guy. <laughs> um, he's not just his character on TV. And you know, a lot of people, um, have, you've worked in, in it, you know, a lot of people aren't often what they seem. <laughs> Mm -hmm. He is. He's exactly what he seems. He's wonderful. And yeah, they have a a rescue place, him and his wife, Tracy. I've read a little bit about that. And I just give so much gratitude to people who um, Mm. to, to, you know, work with animals and help them because they're oftentimes the ones who don't have a voice. But um, but yeah, so it's really great the work that he's doing. And it's really great the work that you're doing. So we've we're going to be going to a break here in one minute. But until we get up to that point, if you'd like to start off by just telling us a little bit about how you made that transition and how living purposefully and passionately can change your life. Well, okay. It started, I I started working in Comedy Central in in New York. Um, I was in New York for many years right after college. And I was there because I needed to be like, I I, I will tell you that as a kid, um, I had to get uh, out of the Midwest and I wanted to be in the center of all the action, you know. And Chris, (laughs) I, well, I understand that, especially in your 20s, <laughs> but yeah. we are heading into break right now. So um, uh, the listening audience, stay with us for two minutes and we'll be right back as we continue on with our special guest, Chris Young. A conscious lifestyle for a mindful life. Om Times Radio, IOM FM. The name is Bond, James Bond. No, the name is Joe, The Joe Show. And we are returning back for our ninth season here on Om Times Radio. So tune in every Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, on oldtimes.com slash mobile. You can take us wherever you go. Yeah! Are you seeking answers to life questions? Would you like to connect to a departed loved one? Are you suffering from pain, stress, or anxiety? Kimberly Thalkin is a tested, certified, and professional psychic, spiritual medium, energy healer, hypnotherapist, and the founder of Love First, where life transformations happen. Love First services support, guide, and empower individuals by connecting them to their highest potential to live a healthier, joyful, and meaningful life that's filled with purpose. All services can be done by phone, Skype, or in person in Encino, California. Please visit lovefirst.info. That's L O V E F I R S T.info for more information. What if business could be fun? What if business is the adventure of living? What are you choosing? Where do you do business that makes it easier, more fun, or more joyful for you? We'd love to see where you do business. Connect with us on Instagram at Joy of Business or Twitter at Joy of Business and share your pictures with hashtags Business Doneware and Joy of Business. Let's change the world with business. Come heal yourself. What is healing? Healing is nothing but connecting with your all-knowing higher self that already has solutions to all your problems and is always there to guide you. Through this show, we help you to connect with that you are and tap into that innate potential you have to transform your life and fly high. Please join me, your host Monica Goyal, every Sunday, 7 p.m. Pacific. Namaste. 
The future of Internet radio is here. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. And welcome back, inspired listening listeners to Inspired Living with Mark and Kim and our special guest, Chris Young. So, Chris, glad to have you back with us. Um, you were talking a little bit about it being in your 20s and moving from the Midwest to New York City. You needed to be a part of the action and where it was all happening. I did. I did. I was I was um, I was kind of I was such a wild boy back then and I wanted to be in the place where. There was the most action. I couldn't think of anywhere other than New York. <laughs> <laughs> I think you found the right spot. <laughs> I think I did. Yeah, so you did that, and then you came out to um, Los Angeles. And talk to us a little bit about, you know, well, how has doing what you love changed your life? Because gardening is a passion. You're writing. That's just beautiful ways to spend your time. It's a, it's a, it's much calmer. I, I, I found that uh, when I was in my twenties, I really, really loved that the craziness and the hecticness and the, you know, and the, and the chaos of, of the work I was doing. And uh, then it started. Uh, then as I got a little bit older, I started remembering. Um, I guess I started remembering nature. Is that a funny thing to say? Um, and I, I I started gardening in my neighborhood in in Manhattan in Brooklyn. My last apartment was in Brooklyn, and I joined a little garden club. And you know, the only gardening to be done is you know the little two foot by two foot squares around the poor trees that are choking in the in the pollution. Oh, <laughs> we, I know, right? But we did it, and that got me hooked. And then when I moved to LA, and I had a chance to actually get in the dirt, forget it, it was over. Oh, I <laughs> just, but it felt like uh, coming home again, I guess, huh? Yeah, it did. Who would have thought that coming to LA would be like coming home, but it really was. <laughs> well, I mean, the gardening part of it, yes. <laughs> what that offers. Yeah, because obviously LA is much more uh, green than New York. <laughs> ah, yes, yes. Bringing you the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio, your conscious lifestyle on steroids. This is Terry Van Horn, and I want to invite you to join me for my weekly radio show, Hailing Light, on Om Times Radio, every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. On Hailing Light, we want to bring love, light, and blessings into your world. You can find out more about us at www.healinglightonline.com. Blessings. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. One planet, 7.3 billion people, only one you. Life offers us many opportunities and learning experiences. Are you ready to explore and discover this beautiful planet, the life and energy all around us? the spiritual world, and what is unseen, along with your own personal soul adventure? Mark Lanehart, the intuitive prospector, is the spiritual connection you have been prospecting for. Internationally known as a tested and professional clairvoyant medium and spiritual advisor, Mark's work as a metaphysical teacher, medical instructor, radio show host, inspirational writer, and hiking guide are here to help you on a journey of self-discovery, healing, inspiration, education, and a whole lot of spiritual awesomeness. Dare to dream. Dare to explore. 
Dare to live. For more information on Mark's spiritual practice in Seattle, Washington, please visit marklanehart.com or internet search The Intuitive Prospector. Hi, this is Julie Geigel. And I'm Alicia Isaacs Howes. And I'm Catherine Glass. And we're the Psychic Angel Channelers. You can find us every week here on Ohm Times Radio at Angel Talk Tuesday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. The angels have heard your call and are here to help. Are you ready to receive? Remember your magnificence with Angel Talk Tuesday. Connecting you with the best of the conscious minds in the world. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. And welcome back to Inspired Living Radio with Mark and Kim here on Ohm Times Radio, the voice of consciousness. So we went right into our second break. I told you, Chris, it goes by fast, doesn't it? It does. It does. <laughs> we're, we're having a good time here talking with Chris Young, talking about gardening, talking about uh, the bees. Um, we were talking how important it is to be educated uh, what the bees are doing and, and how they are uh, taking care of us and we need to start taking care of them. We're also talking about your garden as far as the name, uh, how you came up with that. And I was looking at the pictures on Facebook. looks like a fabulous garden. I could definitely spend uh, every day of my life in something like that. <laughs> please come. Please come visit. Well, I'll be down there in July, and it sounds like you're not too far from uh, Kim's. We may have to do yeah, maybe a, medita- fun, do a meditation. Yeah, Let's do it. In the garden. Yes. All right. Hey, that's what it's all about, being inspired and, uh, you know, just uh, going with Connecting. it. Right? Connecting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Come meet the fairies. <laughs> so, Chris, you talked about the therapeutic uh, part of it um, as far as gardening. But before we jump into how therapeutic uh, gardening can be, we do want to um, – Give a shout out to our sponsor for the second half of the show of Inspired Living, and it's all about happiness. And it's the Happiness Road Tour, and it's a movement that's dedicated to spreading the happy across every major city in the U.S. The Happiness Tour first stops in New York City with an evening of inspiration, entertainment, and meaningful connection that will help spread happiness. Choose happy. You can find more about the road tour at happinessroadtour.com and I know Kita is gearing up for her first event in May so if you're in New York City uh, feel free to check out the Happiness Road Tour and again a proud sponsor of Inspired Living Radio thanks for being a part of the team so Chris uh, tell everybody real quick because this show is going to go by really quick and then I want to get into the (laughs) therapeutic side of gardening but uh, please let our listening audience know where they can find you uh, how they can order this new ebook that you have about fairies, and if they want to learn more about gardening tips or visit your Facebook page, uh, okay. just uh, your website and everything about you, just real quick. Okay. Well, um, my Facebook page for the garden, Tiny Sir has its own garden. We have almost seven thousand followers, so we're very proud of that. Um, it's you can find it on Facebook by searching Tiny Sir T I N Y S U R, not S I R, but S U R of Laurel Canyon, Tiny Sur of Laurel Canyon on Facebook. And that's us. And then on I, you can find Is That a Fairy, our uh, fairy book for little children, um, on iTunes. Go in, it's, a, it's an e-book, so you'll need a tablet to use that. It's interactive, which makes it super fun. You get to interact with the fairies and with my Beagle Daisy. and um, That's on iTunes. It's called Is That a Fairy. It's in the App Store. And, uh, and on, tw- I think on Twitter, I'm Planty McFlowers and I think on Instagram, I'm Planty McFlowers. <laughs> so that's how you guys can find me. Oh, I love the name Planty McFlowers. That's, that's awesome. my, that's my little elephant alter ego. <laughs> so do you have, do you have, uh, do you hold, uh, like workshops or do you have people come to your garden to teach them in gardening and I haven't done that, but I like that, Mark. Keep going. Yeah, yeah, no. I was thinking you could even take it one step further and do like a treasure hunt within your garden and maybe give away one of your books or, you know. Oh, uh, that's, a, that's a great idea. As long as there was no food because my Beagle Daisy would, would steal all the food. <laughs> so <laughs> so tell, tell us about the background of, of, the, of the book for children about getting them, you know, engaged with gardening and getting them out in nature. Where, where did the, uh, the backstory come from? Well, it, it, it kind of came from speaking of the Planty McFlowers character. There's a there's a bigger book that I've been working on called Legend of the Fairy King, and uh, my neighbor knows about that 
and um, he and he works uh, in children's media uh, for a company. His own company is called Eat Your Lunch. So it was very uh, it was very um, happenstance that he just said, "Oh, I love this. I love what you're talking about. You should come up with." Um, a fairy character and let's, let's do a kid's book. And I, I, I said, Oh my God, yes, let's do that. And then I decided as we were working on it, um, that I really, my goal with it want to not, at first I thought, well, I want to be very correct with fairies and blah, blah, blah. And I started researching, but then I thought, no, you know what? This is so simple. I just want to use, uh, the fairies, which I know they approve of as a, as a way to get kids to want to go out and explore in their yards or in, parks with their parents or in nature going on hikes. Um, so it, I know I've, I've probably said this before. It's counterintuitive that I would, I would take a format that every kid has their face buried in as a, and try to get them to put it down and go outdoors. But that's what I'm trying. So <laughs> one, one of the uh, listening audience members at, just sent me a message and said, are fairies real? Can you actually really see them? They are real. Um, there, if, well, you know, if you believe in angels, you probably then would not have a hard time believing in fairies, because if you think of, uh, the angelic realm representing us and looking after us, the, the, uh, the rest of the world needs something looking after them in the natural world with, with plants and animals it it's, it, you could call that energy, the unconscious or the conscious energy, uh, that we would call angels for us are, are fairies, you know, and you probably heard that expression that over every blade of grass, there's an angel leaning over saying, grow, grow, grow. Well, I've that's never, I've never heard that, but I love that. Me oh, that nice. oh yeah. Like that's that. one of my favorite. It's an old saying that I've just heard, you know, throughout my life. So Danielle also says, so thank you for the question, Danielle. She's also saying, I do believe in angels, but what do fairies look like? Do they look like angels? I guess is what she's trying to say. Well, you know, it's 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 really how you interpret them. Um, imagination plays a big part when you're dealing with uh, the ethereal realm, as as you guys probably know. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And and fairies, you know, we have our kind of Tinkerbell version of fairies that we've all been raised on, and so for a lot of people, that is our natural go-to when you think of fairies, and and that's fine. I mean, I I honestly think. However you see them in your mind is 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 just the is fine because that's how they'll communicate to you. Um, they'll go with whatever works for you. So a fairy could be uh, as large as a as a one of those giant you know giants, a giant troll guy, or it could be as small as like a little gnat. You know, it, it's it's really up to you, really up to you how you want to imagine them. But imagining them is making them real. I, I, you know, it's great creativity and imagination. Yeah, and there's Einstein talks about the power of imagination over knowledge. So, I definitely yeah, it's creation. Imagination it's creation. is creation. Exactly. Yeah. And you know, it's unfortunate because we're, we're as we're raised, we're taught not to believe in fairies and things that are unseen. And and really, there is yeah. a whole world out there. As the microscope, you know, demonstrated, there is a whole world out there. Just because you don't see it with your eye doesn't mean that it's not there. absolutely i mean it's like a lot of quantum physics kind of hits on that too i mean there's science kind of even proves it um you just got to get to those gateways oh you know as i as we're saying this is this reminds me if people want to learn more about fairies I, I would send them to my mentors who are bridget wolf and john curtis crawford um they have a website called fairywoodland.com and they have this incredible documentary called Gateways to Fairy. In fact, you guys should talk to them. <laughs> um, yeah, and that I feel, sounds very interesting. And, and, it, and it connects them to nature. And uh, they're real mentors of mine, and they're very wise. They know so much. And I highly recommend there's a documentary that's out about them called Gateways to Fairy. And I think that would help people in a very peaceful way understand you know, the fairies that we're discussing. Yeah, and you know, and, oh, that's their website too because they also do workshops where they teach you to connect with fairy. So that's really beautiful. Oh, very cool. Yeah, Kim, make a note of that. We'll have to we'll have to check well, them out. <laughs> I know. I have taken a note of that. In fact, I was going to ask you, Chris, how do you go about connecting with fairies if people are interested? Um, there's, you know, there's all different kinds of ways. You know, it, it's such a personal thing. It, mm. and I would say to people, find them be really open to the ways that you could interact with fairy. Don't have expectations. Don't expect Tinkerbell to come popping out, you know, from a rainbow. 
Um, but do keep your eyes open and your mind open when you're out in nature. And you, if you're really aware and you're really open, you'll start seeing little communications, whether it's a little glimmer of light here or there. Or my neighbor talks about this all the time. He'll be in my garden and there's no wind at all, but one leaf will start flapping manically. You know, and he's like, well, I, I can only guess that's the fairies. And I said, well, yeah, then if that's what your gut tells you, that's what it is. So, Chris, do they work a lot like spirit? I, I know when – because I don't see usually spirit directly on. I catch them at no, the corner yeah, of my eye. The thing. It's their etheric being. So it's not like – you know, you're not going to see an illustrated Tinkerbell, really. Right, right, right. <laughs> um, it, and – go ahead. It's just that quick flash or it's the things that get you to, to notice and turn your head. Is it that kind of experience? It's, when you yeah, it's often the corner of your eye. And, mm -hmm. I, and I also think that nature spirits will express themselves in very funny, simple ways to us. Like uh, an experience that I had about a year ago, I was uh, out in the backyard with my beagle and my cat, Fred, and my beagle, Daisy. And they're just, they're just like hanging out, laying in the sun. And I was sitting on our picnic table and I felt like I was being watched. You know, that feeling you have when someone's like looking at the back of your head or something. And I was oh, looking around. There's nobody there, nobody there. And I'm like, well, I'm crazy. And then I, then I feel it again. I look up and this birch tree that has been in our garden since I moved in 10, 10 or so years ago, um, I'm looking at it and clear as a bell. This is going to make me sound insane. But clear as a bell, I see a face etched in the bark, not etched like, you know, not like a... a uh, some kid did it, but actually the way the bark has grown and it was the clear face of a horse and it was the funniest thing. And now when I'm out there, I always like, you know, acknowledge it and say hello. And, and, I, and you know, I just, it's, that's a way that they can expose themselves and just say, Hey, I'm here, you know, and it's, mm -hmm. and I would say that's the spirit of the tree sort of just giving you a little wink saying, Hey, I'm Talk here. Yeah, no, yeah. Not, cra not crazy at all. When I'm out on my hikes, I actually get that feeling That's all the good. time. And being here in the Pacific Northwest, we have the highest uh, sightings of um, Sasquatch or what people would call Bigfoot. And oh, there's I, so I'm, much magic up there in the, oh, in the South Northwest. Yeah, and, and so I'm, oh, I'm always having that feeling that I'm being watched. So uh, you're not crazy at all. And we're going to be going to our last break. But I also was, uh, as we were talking about fairies, the movie Pan's Labyrinth is all in Spanish, but an excellent uh, movie about fairies and the interaction with fairies. Oh, so, I want to see that. Yeah, Pan's Labyrinth, so it's a lot of fun. So we're going to go to our last break. We have special guest Chris Young. Uh, when we come back, let's talk about therapeutic uh, gardening and how it can be healthy for us. So stick around for two minutes. This is Inspired Living Radio on Home Times. Your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Do you have time to read that inspiring book or that blog post you've been meaning to get to? In your busy world, how do you improve yourself and keep your life going? I'm Lisa Kay, and my Between Heaven and Earth radio show can transform your life just by listening. Be uplifted with inspiring topics, positive stories, and ideas that really work. Between Heaven and Earth Radio is conscious living for your soul every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Looking for inspiration? Want to be inspired? Not sure where to go. Find Mark and Kim every Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern on Inspired Living. Topics will elevate consciousness and range from metaphysics to the human and social experience and all things spiritual. Welcome to an inspired community that offers support, encouragement, and new ways of thinking. You are, you are the, the inspired inspire and the inspiration. inspiration. As difficult as it is to believe, there are places in Africa where human traffickers sell albino children and their body parts for use in magic rituals. Humanity Healing International is actively working in Uganda to change this paradigm. The Albino Rescue Project finds albino children who are at risk and places them in safe schools and environments where they can learn and grow free from fear. To learn more or to sponsor a child, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. 
September 23rd, September 23rd, September 23rd. Mark that down on your calendar. Put it in your phone. Whatever you do, circle that date. 9 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio. Yes, it is the return of the Joe Show. We will come back live with Season 9. Wow, nine seasons. I can only think of four. Winter, spring, summer, fall. Salt, pepper, oregano, and thyme. No. Anyways, we don't have that much time. We're going to be back live September 23rd. Don't forget at 9 p.m. Eastern here on Home Times Radio. Feed your soul with waves of consciousness on Ohm Times Radio. And welcome back, inspired listeners, to Inspired Living with Mark and Kim and our guest today, Chris Young. So, Chris, before we went on break, we were talking about fairies. Um, Before we move into gardening and the health benefits of gardening, I'd love to hear a little bit more about how we can work with fairies or how they can maybe help us. It's it's um, yeah, it's it's a it's an intention. And uh, so when I garden, I garden with an intention to be helping nature, to be doing, you know, like I was saying, as a habitat garden. So your intention goes a long way into drawing in that nature because um, the nature spirits respond to, um, well, I guess they respond to like honesty and authenticity. So um, I find that as I'm doing things really quietly, and it can be the most inane things like trimming, you know, something that's mindless, not, not the creative stuff even. And I will get flashes of ideas that uh, um, I credit to them that suddenly says, oh, you know, that plant that's been in a pot for four months on the deck, plant that here. Or, you know, that idea you've been thinking of, go write that down now. Like I, I get flashes of stuff and I can only, you know, I can only guess that it's coming from those guys because I'm out in out in there getting my hands dirty and I don't get that kind of inspiration when I'm, you know, in an office or watching TV. Oh, I just love it. Yes, that's the way it all it all happens, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's it's when you're not when you're when you're in the most like non thought non thinking mode and you're just doing something that's very rote that you'll start to hear the thoughts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's <laughs> beautiful. Um, so you talk a lot too about the health benefits of gardening. Yeah share a little bit with our listeners in our community about how how it can help our health well I, I can tell you this um, I know that if I'm in a really sour mood or something's upset me and if I just go out for a walk in nature which you know Mark can testify to this if I just go out and walk in nature and I think you'll, everyone will find this it's hard to be angry when mm-hmm. you're in nature whether it's just your backyard whether you're looking at a pot of flowers whether you're you know hiking uh, in a, on a trail, um, if you just spend a moment focusing on nature, which is outside of yourself, you know, like anything, um, there's a peace that comes over you. And I really do think that there's a play of energy between plants and humans. And we know science is proving that there's a play of energy between soil, the compounds in soil, and our bodies. So getting your hands dirty uh, with soil, literally is so good for you and it's so good for your outlook and your, uh, and your health. So we're finding that that's being proved scientifically. So that's pretty exciting. Oh yes. I believe every, every word of that. Now you also talk about it being good for, um, physical therapy. Oh yeah. Well. Yeah. Mark and I were talking about that too. I, I, we both have had horrible back injuries and I was telling him about mine. I fell down a flight of stairs and I was paralyzed and the surgery was oh. successful and everything, but I had to learn to walk and learn to use my hand, all that, all that. And, um, and I've learned that when you're in that scenario, it's easy to just quit and give up. And I have to say, I'm very thankful to my garden because nature literally was calling me. Um, people had to, had to help me walk up the steps to get to my yard, but it's, it, made me want to get out of the house. And then I would pick up a hose and try to do this, or I'd do little things here and there. And I slowly have built up my strength in addition to physical therapy, but it's helped my heart and it's helped my soul, you know? And if it wasn't for the garden, I don't think I would be in the good shape that I'm in now two years later after the accident. 
Wow, that must have been a very trying, uh, difficult time. But isn't it wonderful I, how God's creation can, you know, help to restore well-being again? Yeah, truly. I and I don't recommend falling down the stairs, by the way. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. I'm so don't sorry you experienced it. that. No, goodness. No, but you know, good comes out of that. Even you know, because I was forced to quiet down and. I, and I think um, my garden has benefited greatly from my OCD-like attention to it while I've been recovering. <laughs> oh, well, that's – it's so nice to have an outlet like that that can help. I um, do recommend it. I mean, I think, you know, something beyond television, you know, something where you're in the world, even if you're by yourself in the world, you know, in nature, get out. Get outside. <laughs> and there's, there's, get that outside. Old, there's that old saying that pain makes us pay attention, so – it does. It does. And it slows you down. And when it's, when your body slows you down, there's a reason a lot of times. Um, I was certainly probably going a million miles an hour. So it was a not so subtle way that my body said, hey, hey, <laughs> calm down. Well, now, what um, if somebody would like to garden, but, you know, they hear you talking about all these great benefits of it and it sounds mm-hmm. interesting to them. But let's just say they, they don't know the first thing about it. Where should they mm-hmm. start? Oh, gosh. Um, I recommend going to your local nursery, not a Home Depot. Um, I only say not a Home Depot. There could be wonderful people working there, but they use pesticides on their flowers, and we don't want to hurt the bees. But um, go to your local nursery, and nursery people love to give information, and it's a free way to do it. You start talking them up, and before too long, they're like, well, what are you doing? What are you doing? And they can start recommending plants and how to care for them. You can really lean heavily on on the people at the nursery because, you know, that's what they know. So take their advice. And, and also experiment. Don't be afraid to plant things and, and fail um, because you can always replant. <laughs> mm-hmm. See, that, that is great advice because I would have gone to the Home Depot. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean – I, I, I didn't, I, I didn't I, know I, that. Me neither. Against- Nothing against Home Depot in no, general, no. Just, just their pesticide use uh, on their flowering plants. Yeah. We want them to change that. So I know there's petitions going around. <laughs> now, is that is well, that all the big box stores like Lowe's and Home Depot? Well, there... I think Lowe's is working on changing that. I've read something recently that Lowe's is changing that, but Home Depot has not got on board as far as I know. If they have, that's that's awesome. And if they have, I will post that on my Tiny Sir page on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, great info. Well, what, yeah. um, Chris, what are ways that, um, so what, it, what would be recommended alternatives to pesticides? Uh, well, you know, it's, uh, for, I always tell people if you, if you plant, uh, the right way and if you plant, uh, using lots of natives, um, a lot of times you'll do, you don't really need them. And you know what? Honestly, just pull the weeds if you can, cause that's good for you. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell you how much strength I was able to build up in my old wonky arms after the surgery just from pulling crabgrass. Aha. <laughs> uh-huh. Okay. I, and yeah, I, I just, just go do the work if you can or you know, or, or convince a kid in your life to do it for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I imagine intent would go a long way as, as far as planting. And do you talk to your plants and do you name them? Uh, yeah, I'm that guy. Every yep. tree has a okay. name. Every, yep. I name everything. I mean literally that's – well, how the garden got its name. I, I name everything because that, uh, to me, something that you can address personally is something that's so much easier to love and understand if, if you know, you have sort of a name for it. So Tiny Sur, it kind of comes from Big Sur, which is my favorite place on the planet. And oh, so yes. we're a bit of an homage and it's very informed by the wildlife of California. Well, Kim, we're going to have to go see this uh, Tiny Sur when I'm down there. I can't wait. I'm all excited now. But Me too. I can't wait to take all your classes. <laughs> oh, yes. Wonderful. <laughs> I, You know, I have to say, though, Chris, just in having you on, this has been such a, a one of life's delights. Hello. I really find this conversation oh. have been delightful just along with our affirmation. Delightful, oh. educational, inspirational. Yeah. yeah. You guys are my I, favorites. <laughs> well, I really, I really would love to see you spreading the awareness and your knowledge that you have of how people can, you know, help with the plants and do the right things in their gardens. And that's my goal. My goal community. is to be out there and hopefully help people with that sort of thing. So I, that's I'm always looking for ways to share what I know. 
Okay. Well, very good. Well, we'd love to have you back on our show again. We do. Uh, we are kind of coming to an end here, which I yeah. knew it would happen fast. So fast. So fast. Yeah. It seems like I've been on with for five minutes. <laughs> I know. I know. So um, anyways, we want to give you a, just a big thank you with so much gratitude for spending this hour with us and, yes, and thanks, sharing. Chris this Back just beautiful information and uh, we'll post uh, the information on how people can find you and your book um, on our social media pages and we want to thank oh, you for thank being you. here we want to um, let our listeners know that next week we have a um a very inspirational guest speaker coming on. Dr. Barbara DeAngelis Mm -hmm. is going to be joining us. So we're very excited about that too. Um, So Mark, any uh, final comments that you'd like to make here too? No, just a, just a great show. I I love nature and gardening and I'm a up and coming gardener. So I'm looking forward to learning from uh, Chris and seeing the garden. And yeah, next week's show I'm looking forward to because I got to meet Barbara at the You Can Do It conference and reading her book, Soul Shift. So it's a great show. You're not going to want to miss it. Tune in uh, next Wednesday at 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern. Uh, Until then, Kim, be kind, be caring, be compassionate. Have a great week, everybody. Namaste. Have a beautiful and great week, everybody, and thank you for being with us today. It was so good to be back. I missed uh, the show while I was gone and uh, just excited to come back again. Next week, we've got Dr. Barbara DeAngelis. The week after that, we've got Paul Jacobs. So, woohoo! Have a great week, and we'll see you next Wednesday on Wednesday.